welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at how blood glucose concentration is regulated within the body. So the normal ranges are just there on the screen. I have seen them on multiple choice questions, so you do be you do need to know those ranges. Now blood glucose con concentration can increase when you eat things and it also decreases normally. The main one is respiration because glucose is used up in aerobic respiration. There are some other key terms on there that you do need to be aware of, but we're going to touch upon them in the next couple of slides as well. So, but my blood glucose concentration, if it rises too high, this is going to be detected by beta cells that can be found in the islets of Langerhans within the pancreas. And what happens as a result of this is the hormone insulin will be secreted into the blood. Now, the blood is the thing that carries my insulin all over my body. However, insulin will only target certain cells that have a receptor on it that is complementary and specific in shape to that insulin hormone. Now, because insulin is a, a large hormone and it's a peptide-based hormone, it cannot diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer. So it goes through the first messenger and second messenger response. So the target cells here within the liver are called the hepatocytes, but we can also have target cells within the muscle cells as well. So the insulin binds to these receptors because it's complementary and specific in shape, and those receptors can be found on the plasma or cell surface membrane of the hepatocytes. Now, because insulin uses the first messenger and second messenger model, this will cause adenyl cyclase to activate cyclic AMP, and it's cyclic AMP which will cause more glucose channels to be placed within the plasma or cell surface membrane of these hepatocytes or muscle cells. This will cause more glucose to enter these cells. Now, in the liver, in the liver, the glucose is converted to glycogen for storage, and that is also known as glycogenesis. Glucose can also be converted into fats. But also, this especially occurs to the muscle cells. More glucose can be used in aerobic respiration and therefore increasing the metabolic activity of this organism. And all of these different things will cause the blood glucose concentration to fall within those narrow limits that we want them to be in to regulate our blood glucose concentration. And that is an example of negative feedback where your body has recognized that there's been a change. It's gone outside of the limits, so it's brought it back within the normal range. So, um, if blood glucose concentration falls too low, so for example, you haven't eaten for a while, um, therefore most a lot of the glucose is used up in aerobic respiration, this is going to be detected by the alpha cells, which can be found in the islets of Langerhans within the pancreas. This causes the hormone glucagon to be secreted into the blood, which will take that all over the body, and it will bind to target cells that can be found on the hepatocytes within the liver. It will cause the glycogen that's stored in the liver to be converted into glucose via glycogenolysis. And this um, causes hydrolysis of the glycogen back into the glucose monomers. We've also got more fatty acids will be used in respiration. And also amino acids and fats can be converted into glucose, which is also known as gluconeogenesis. And all of these different things will cause the blood glucose concentrations to rise within the blood. Now, on here, you can see there are a couple of things that we need to know about. Um, so please make sure you're aware of those different points when you're talking about the blood glucose concentration. So we've got the very last bit to do, looking at how we control insulin secretion with reference to potassium channels. So the way that this occurs is um, through this process here. Now, that's quite complex. I'm going to show you a diagram which just breaks it down a little bit more. So here we have, um, normally, with on my cell, uh, we have these potassium channels and calcium channels, which are normally open. Um, so therefore, potassium ions can flow through. However, when I've got a lot of blood, blood glucose concentration, when it's high, the glucose will move into the cell via facilitated diffusion. And as the glucose is metabolized, it will produce ATP. And this ATP will actually close these potassium channels that we talked about here at the beginning. Now, because my potassium channels have actually closed, what this causes is it will change the potential difference across the membrane of the cell, so it'll become uh, less negative. As a result of this change within the membrane's potential, the calcium channels will begin to open. So calcium will rush in along its electrochemical gradient, and calcium will cause these vesicles that contain insulin to fuse with the plasma membrane or cell surface membrane to release the insulin by exocytosis. So that is the process by which 
en Cel